It was a sweltering summer afternoon in the heart of a bustling city. The sun beat down relentlessly, casting a haze over the streets. People rushed in and out of stores, hurrying to escape the heat. Among the crowd was Thomas Matthews, a quiet and unassuming black man in his mid-thirties. He was on his way to pick up his daughter Chloe from school. As a loving single father, his world revolved around her, and every day picking her up was the best part of his day. Thomas wasn't wealthy. He worked as a janitor at a local school, barely making enough to get by, but he always made sure that Chloe had what she needed. They lived in a modest apartment, far from luxury but filled with love. Chloe, an eight-year-old with big dreams and a contagious smile, adored her father. To her, he was a superhero, always there to comfort her and make her laugh, even when times were tough. But today was different. As Thomas approached the intersection near Chloe's school, he noticed a commotion ahead. Police cars, their lights flashing, were stationed outside a nearby convenience store. A robbery had just taken place, and the thief had fled the scene in a stolen car. The air buzzed with tension, and Thomas instinctively felt uneasy. He quickened his pace, wanting nothing more than to reach Chloe and take her home. But just as he crossed the street, he heard a voice behind him. Stop right there! Thomas froze, his heart pounding. He turned to see two police officers approaching him, their expressions stern and their hands on their holsters. Confused, he glanced around, unsure of why they were addressing him. He hadn't done anything wrong. Put your hands where we can see them, one of the officers barked, his tone laced with authority. Thomas's heart raced as he slowly raised his hands. What's going on? He asked, his voice trembling. I didn't do anything. The officers ignored his protest and moved in closer. You match the description of a suspect in a robbery, the second officer said coldly. You're coming with us. Panic set in. Thomas's mind raced. He hadn't robbed anyone, and he certainly hadn't stolen a car. He was just a man on his way to pick up his daughter. But the officers weren't interested in hearing his side of the story. They handcuffed him roughly, forcing him to the ground. Bystanders watched in silence, some pulling out their phones to record the scene, but no one intervened. As Thomas lay on the hot pavement, face pressed against the ground, all he could think about was Chloe. He had to get to her. She'd be waiting for him at school, wondering why her dad hadn't shown up. Please, Thomas pleaded, his voice shaking. I have a daughter. I need to pick her up. You've got the wrong person. The officers exchanged glances but showed no signs of stopping. One of them grabbed Thomas by the arm, hauling him to his feet. Tell it to the judge, the officer sneered as they led him toward the police car. Meanwhile, not far from the scene, the real thief, a man named Kyle, sat behind the wheel of the stolen car. He was white, young, and cocky, laughing to himself as he sped through the city streets. He couldn't believe how easy it had been. The police had swarmed the convenience store just moments after he had fled. But instead of chasing him, they had grabbed the first black man they saw, assuming he was the criminal. Kyle had been in trouble with the law before, but he always knew how to slip away unnoticed. Today was no different. As he drove through the city, watching the chaos unfold on the news, he couldn't help but feel invincible. Back at the police station, Thomas sat in a cold, dimly lit cell his wrists were sore from the handcuffs and his mind was racing. How had this happened? How could they think he was a criminal? He had lived his whole life trying to do the right thing, to be a good father, to work hard and provide for Chloe. And now here he was, treated like a common thief, all because he happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. As the hours passed, Thomas's thoughts shifted back to his daughter. Chloe would be terrified waiting at school with no one to pick her up. He imagined her standing alone, her wide, innocent eyes searching the crowd for him. The thought of her being scared and abandoned was too much to bear. Inside his cell, Thomas felt powerless. He had been taught to trust the system, to believe that justice would prevail. But in that moment, it felt like the world had turned its back on him. He was just another black man, caught up in a cycle of systemic racism that judged him not by his actions, but by the color of his skin. As night fell, Emily Richards, Chloe's teacher, noticed that no one had come to pick her up. Concerned, she called the school's emergency contact number 
and eventually reached one of Thomas's neighbors. When Emily learned that Thomas had been arrested, she was shocked. She knew him well. He was a kind, hardworking man who loved his daughter more than anything. Something didn't add up. Determined to help, Emily drove to the police station. She explained to the officers that there must have been a mistake. Thomas wasn't a criminal. He was a father, just trying to pick up his daughter from school. But the officers dismissed her concerns, insisting that Thomas fit the description of the suspect. Just as Emily was about to leave, news came in from another precinct. The stolen car had been found abandoned on the side of the highway. Fingerprints taken from the car didn't match Thomas's. The real thief, Kyle, had slipped away, leaving behind a trail of evidence that finally exonerated Thomas. As the officers processed the new information, the weight of their mistake became painfully clear. They had arrested an innocent man, all while the real criminal had gone free. The tension in the station was palpable as the officers realized the gravity of their error. Thomas was released later that night, but the damage had already been done. He walked out of the station, exhausted and emotionally drained. Emily was waiting for him with Chloe by her side. When Chloe saw her father, she ran to him, tears streaming down her face. Thomas knelt down and hugged her tightly, his own tears mixing with hers. Daddy, where were you? Chloe asked, her voice trembling. Thomas couldn't find the words. How could he explain to his daughter that he had been taken away simply because of who he was? How could he tell her that the world wasn't always fair, especially to people like them? As they made their way home, Thomas couldn't shake the feeling of humiliation and betrayal. The city he had called home had turned on him in an instant, reducing him to nothing more than a stereotype. But as he held Chloe's hand, he realized something important. He wasn't going to let this break him. The next few days were difficult. News of the wrongful arrest spread quickly, and the video footage taken by bystanders went viral. The city was outraged. Protests erupted, demanding justice not just for Thomas, but for all the black men and women who had been wrongfully targeted by the system. Thomas, though reluctant at first, became a symbol of resilience. He spoke out about his experience, not for sympathy, but to make sure this wouldn't happen to someone else. His voice, once silenced by fear and injustice, became a powerful tool for change. He stood tall, not just as a victim, but as a father fighting for a better world for his daughter. And as for Kyle, his freedom didn't last long. He was eventually caught, arrested for another crime, and the truth about his role in the robbery came to light. But by then, the focus had shifted. The real story wasn't just about the crime, but about the deep-rooted prejudices that had allowed an innocent man to be arrested in the first place. In the end, what shocked everyone wasn't just that Thomas had been wrongfully arrested, it was the realization that this could happen to anyone who looked like him. It was the painful truth that the system, meant to protect and serve, often failed the very people who needed it the most. But Thomas, with his quiet strength and unwavering love for his daughter, refused to be broken. His story became a rallying cry for justice, a reminder that while the road ahead was long, there was still hope for a better, fairer world.